Hallelujah. Come on, if you're grateful, give Jesus Christ a good hand of praise. Come on, if you're grateful to Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Take your Bibles and turn them to the book of Romans. Thank you, worship team. Chapter 8, verse 28. Just going to read one portion of scripture. If you don't have your Bibles, we also have it on the screens as well. I want to thank everyone for tuning in live as well. Amen. Come on, let's give our, our Facebook Live, our audience, a good hand of praise. Amen. Wherever you're tuning in from, on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Nick and Sister Myra Walker, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Amen. We pray that you guys are blessed here today. And uh, obviously, you can see that Pastor Nick is not here because Pastor Nick is actually in Jacksonville, Florida. Come on now and right there, one of our, our baby churches, amen, pioneering churches. And uh, God is doing an awesome, awesome thing right there in Jacksonville, Florida. So he's going to be there uh, for the entire week. So we ask you guys to keep our pastor in prayer. Amen. He's going to be speaking tonight and sharing and uh, throughout the week and to be investing and, and you know, and, and talking, amen, to the pastors and just being there with them and being with the church, amen. So we want to continue to keep him in prayer throughout the week for traveling mercies and that, that there's a revival that's taking place, amen, uh, there in Jacksonville. But also, how many of you guys know the revival taking place here within Victory Outreach Chicagoland, amen? Amen. So I do thank Pastor Nick and Sister Meyer uh, for this opportunity, amen. So Romans chapter 8. Verse 28, and it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Who are called according to his purpose. If you're taking notes tonight, I want to encourage you to do that today. Amen. I, want, I titled today's message, Value the Call. Amen. Value the Call. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just come before you. God, I thank you for this opportunity uh, today, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, that you separate me, God, that you move me to the side, God, that you speak. Holy Spirit, I pray that every heart that is here today and those that are online watching and listening, God, I pray let our hearts be open, my God, let our ears be attentive to your voice, my God. I pray you have your hand, Father, upon our pastor as well as he's going to be there in Jacksonville this entire week. Let your anointing rest upon him. God, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we all say amen. You guys can have your seats. Hallelujah. And as I was preparing for uh, this message uh, today, uh, throughout uh, about two weeks, pastor told me that he was going to be heading out to Jacksonville and he asked me. So I had a good time to prepare something, amen. And as I was praying and I was uh, seeing, you know, what, what the series we just came out of and what pastor was talking about last week, amen, and, and uh, where we're at as a church, amen. Because how many of you guys know that God is doing new things within our church, amen. We are in a new season, amen, where God is really bringing in uh, new people into our church services, into the life groups, amen. Uh, we're, we're, we're able to be connected. We're on the streets, come on now, on Thursday nights and Especially all of us being from Chicago, amen, that we know that the, the wind is not going to bother us, amen. We're going to be out there. We're going to reach people, amen, on Thursday nights, on Sunday nights. So I want to encourage you, amen, to come on Sunday, uh, today, tonight at 6 p.m. We're going to be out there. We're going to be ministering. And like my dad said earlier, we, we've been hitting these places, but people are starting to know, man, that's Victory Outreach. Come on now. Right? People are starting to recognize, amen, Victory Outreach Chicagoland. And we're, we're trying to, we want to really make our mark. Everywhere that we go, amen, everywhere that we go as a church, amen, if it's a, whether it's a big group or a small group that goes out, whether it be on Thursday night or on Sunday nights or any other night, we want to make an impact in this city, amen, because we know that this city needs Jesus. Come on, somebody. Our city needs Jesus like never before, and what better way to reach people than to spread the love of Jesus, amen, right there on the street corners, amen, so we want to encourage you to be out there, but the reason why I, I, I titled today's uh, message, Value the Call, is because many of us in here, we're called. All of us are called to do something for the Lord, great or small, to be seen or unseen, amen. You, you, you may not be called to be up here and you may not have, never have the opportunity to, to be up on the platform or, 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 or to be seen, like you would say, amen. Or you might be in the back, you know, for, for a season of your time, whatever it could be. You're calling, amen, that, that what God has called you and I to do, amen, most of all, most importantly, is to serve him, amen. You and I are called first and foremost to serve God. And you see, here with, even within Victory Outreach International and Victory Outreach Chicagoland, 
the calling of God that, that, that God has given our ministry over 50 plus years ago, there in 1967 in, in Los Angeles, California, God had, had given a, a vision to a couple, amen, a praying couple, and we're here today because of it. We're here today, amen, we're about to celebrate 30 years, I'm not right, next year if I'm not mistaken, Sister Myra, 30 years where Pastor Nick and Sister Myra came to Chicago. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise. They came with them and their two children, they came in a, a station wagon, if I'm not, from a U-Haul, amen, and they came and, and, and over 30 years ago, amen, over 30 years ago, and look what the Lord has done. You are here because of it, because of a promise. Amen. That we're not just in called to inherit cities. Come on, somebody. But we're called to inherit nations. You saw it last week with Sister Rosa. Amen. Man, if you don't believe in the power of your giving, amen, that was a testimony. I mean, we've seen it with Sister Jessica there in Panama. Amen. And now even with last week with Sister Rosa being uh, right also there in Panama as well. So we can see, amen, that the promises of God are coming to life, have continued to come to life within our church. And you're a part of it. You're a part, amen, of what God wants to do here within the city of Chicago and here within the ministry of Victory Outreach Chicagoland. The promises of God are true. The promises of God are yes and amen. The promises of God that whatever promise that you may have right now, maybe say, you know, Brother Michael, I don't have a direct promise for my life, but I want to give you a few real quick. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, it says, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid. Nor be dismayed, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 27 it says, For God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the scripture that we just read in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good. Of those who love God to all who are called according to his purpose. You see, in, in, in order to understand the call, church, we have to understand first what a call is. You see, a call, amen, is how God created you and I to worship him. Not just to worship him, but how to serve him. And to honor him in all that we do. Many of you have different traits. Many of you have different abilities and, and talents. Right, many of the things that you, right before, you know, especially when a new person comes into the church and they begin to come, they, be, you know, start being faithful in the things of God. And you see them more than just Sundays, but they start getting invested into a life group. And they begin, you see them on the streets with us and things like that. We begin to pull those people in. We begin, what is it that you like to do, right? How many of you guys remember being asked that question? Especially those ushers, right? Maybe you're dealing with children. You always ask first, what is it that you like to do? Can you sing? Can you play an instrument? Do you like working with kids? Do you like dealing with people, working with people? What is it that you like to do? And usually most of the time, the things that we like to do or love to do are the things that we're called to do. You see the, the, the beautiful sisters up here in the worship team. They're called to worship the Lord. Right? Usually a, a good worshiper has a good voice. Come on, somebody. Right? We're all called to worship the Lord, man, but there's some that are just talented, man. They can, they can sing, right? They, they have a, a, a great, tremendous voice. Man, there's some of you here today that you can speak better than anyone else could ever speak. You're a people person, right? Whatever it is that God has called you to do, you and I have to understand that we're created. We, you and I were created to do it unto him. Not to man, not to be seen, but to do it unto the Lord. I like this quote I heard. It says, Oliver, uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes said, every calling is great when greatly pursued. Every calling is great when greatly pursued. So my friend, I want to let you know here today that there's no calling that's too small. There's no calling that seems a little bit less than someone else's. Doesn't matter if you're in the back. Doesn't matter if you're downstairs with the kids. Whenever we have kids, kids gang again, it doesn't matter. Whatever calling that God has placed inside of your life. Do it unto him and honor him when you do it. You see, God wants to give you and I a bit more. God wants to, I believe God wants to give our church a lot more. But it's going to take you and I as individuals to want it. 
It's not enough for our pastors just to want it. It's not enough just for our leadership to want it. It's not enough just for the ministers to want it. But when the entire church wants more of God, God's going to reveal himself. God's going to begin to reveal us. I don't know about you, church, but God has been revealing himself every single time that we come to these altars. Man, the presence of God that you and I are in. God is here. But is God with you throughout that week? Come on, somebody. When you're not here in church on Sunday, throughout that week, are you going after it? Are you pursuing it? Are you pursuing the things of God inside of your life? You see, when you and I don't go after the things of God, when you and I don't continue to build that relationship with the things of God, what we're doing is we're squandering the call and we're not valuing the call. See, when you and I only come to church on Sunday and we only, you know, lift our hands on Sunday, my friend, and you don't do it throughout the week, I'm here to tell you today, your relationship is lacking. If you're not doing it throughout the week, if, you're not, if you don't have that personal time with the Lord, if you don't have that prayer closet, if you don't have that time where you can get alone and be broken by yourself and lift your hands by yourself, my friend, you're squandering what God has given you. Because it's in those moments where God speaks to you. It's in those moments where God breaks you. It's in those moments where God reminds you of his faithfulness. It's in those moments where God reminds you of his promises. It's in those moments where God reveals who he is in those secret times. In those secret times where just you and the Lord and no one else. I like how one of our elders, Pastor Tom Vasquez, said we don't need inspiration. We need connection. We don't need to be inspired. I, I believe that we need to be connected. We need to be connected to the one that, that, that gives us life. Yes, it's good to be inspired. Yes, it's good to have great examples before us. But it's even better to be connected to the source. Come on, somebody. To be connected to the true vine. To be connected to him and him alone. Because inspiration can only get you so far. Why? Because inspiration is based on feeling. Man, if I feel inspired, if I feel like going to church on Sunday, if I feel like going to life group on Wednesday, if I feel like going outside today at 6 p.m. and evangelizing, come on now. Based on feeling. But when you have a connection, you have a relationship, and you have something that's personal between you and the Lord, they say no matter what comes my way, I'm going to keep serving. I'm going to keep connecting. I'm going to keep going forward. You see, God is looking for a people. And I believe here within our church, there's a people that are hungry for the things of God. Are you not hungry, church? Are you hungry for the things of God? Have you been waking up at 7 with the, with the rest of our church and praying and believing? Man, there's such a hunger Especially with our leadership and our ministers, there's a hunger that we have to see our, our, not only our relationship grow with the Lord, but then we want to see our church grow. We want to see this place filled with hurting people. We want to see this place filled with the lost and bound men and women who are just like you and I. We want to see this place packed with people. We need more of Jesus. You see some of these empty chairs. And yes, we are obviously with COVID and, and you know, we're keeping our distance and things like that. But we already have a, a plan in place that even if more people do come, there's a TV outside, right? All we got to do is go to Facebook Live and they can watch it from right there in the hallway. So there's no limitations to what God can do, church, despite of COVID-19. We're here. Come on now. Come on, give yourselves a hand. You're here. <laughs> I want to give you a few quick ways, amen, that how you and I can squander the call of God. The first thing is a lack of genuineness. You see, being, being genuine means you care about something, right? When you're genuine about something, you take ownership of whatever it is, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a, a job, how you do your job, right? Right? coming to church, doing your ministries, 
you're genuine about what you do. We have some genuine people within our church, right, especially when it comes to cooking. Come on, somebody. Some of you ladies in here, you know how to cook, and you're genuine when you do it. I know Sister Mara, when she cooks, she's genuine in her cooking, right? When my wife cooks, she's genuine in her cooking, right? When some of you hear some of these, like you could tell Sister Shala was genuine in that time of worship, right? You could see it. You could see genuineness. And you see, when we lack genuineness before the Lord, it can squander. It could squander the call that God has given us. Some lack genuineness because of, of the way we think. Some of you have been hurt for so many years. You've been uh, mentally abused and, and the way you think is just so negative. And what is it that they want from me? Why do I got to keep giving every Sunday? Why do I got to keep giving to United We Can? Or why do I got to co- go and be involved in all these different things throughout the week? The reason why we have those things is for, is for a people like us because we know how to get into some trouble. Come on now, right? So we got to stay connected. We got to stay one-on-one. But you got to get rid of that stinking thinking. Come on now. You see, if it doesn't have, if, if it doesn't have to do anything with, with me, sometimes it could be an attitude, man. Wh- whatever I want to do, I'm going to do it. You see, we need a people who are going to be genuine and not selfish. This is where it comes, my friend. I'm, I'm here to let you know today, church. I'm trying to encourage you here today to let you know. That these are the things that can hinder not just the call of God but the growth within our church. If you and I do not have a genuineness before the Lord. If we don't have a genuineness for the heart of God for ministry to seeing people win one for the Lord. It could be a hindrance. Here within this ministry we've learned how to serve. Here within our ministry we learn how how to treat one another, how to respect one another. Man, when you're, in, when you're in Victory Outreach, you, you, you know how to, you, you're going to learn how to serve, right? You're going to learn how to get down, get on your knees and get your hands dirty. You're going to learn how to do it. Why? Because I believe, man, when you're on your knees and you're getting dirty, when I'm talking about being on your hands and your knees, I'm talking about being there, man, in, in, deep in, the, in, in ministry, right? When you're constantly being, you're constantly involved. Constantly being, amen, uh, uh, what, 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 you, what you're asked to do, right? Not just asking what you do. Man, when you're praying and you're believing, you're fasting, you're getting a hold of the Lord. See, those are the kind of things, man, when you're on your knees and you're in the trenches and you're, you're right there with our pastors and our leaders and you're believing and you're fighting with us. See, what, what begins to cultivate within your heart is not just a sense of, of gratitude, but, man, but it's a sense of genuineness that becomes to come out of you. They say, man, you know, I want to be faithful in what I'm doing. I want to be found faithful before the Lord and what God has given me to do it with a grateful heart, to do it with a genuine heart. People who are passionate, people who are passionate about serving God, people who are passionate about being involved. You see, church, if we don't have genuineness, we can squander the call that God has given us. If you and I are not genuine, if we're not real with the Lord, if we're not sincere with the Lord, and we're not open with the Lord, it's going to hinder your walk. But it's not only going to hinder your walk, it's also, it also can hinder the move that God wants to do. This is why, man, when that, when that time of worship in the beginning of service is so important, it's so key. It's so important, church. It's not just songs that are being sung. They're not here to entertain anybody. Come on now. But they're here to worship. Her to lead people into the presence of God. I don't know about you, but, man, I've had a stressful week. How about you? Am I the only one? Right? So, man, when I lift my hands, when I come to service on Sunday, I get excited. I get excited because, man, I want to see new people. But, man, I can't wait to worship the Lord with my church. I can't wait to see other people lifting their hands and being broken. I can't wait to see that new person. He might be a little timid and lifting his hands, but all of a sudden he begins to lift them a little bit higher and you begin to see tears fall down their face. See, those are the kind of things that you and I, church, have to keep. 
You and I have to keep, amen, that genuineness within our worship, that genuineness within our relationship with the Lord, because it's so easy to lose it. It's so easy to lose it. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 says, And whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Whatever you do, to do it wholeheartedly as unto the Lord and not unto men. That whatever you and I do before the Lord is to do it wholeheartedly unto him and him alone. Whatever you and I do, whether it be at work, whether it be at home, whether it be here within our ministry, whatever you and I do, we do it with a grateful heart. We do it with a heart that says, God, I'm not doing this to be seen. I'm not doing this to be recognized, but I'm doing it unto you. You know, a lot of people leave the church because they don't get recognized. Or they don't get the, the acknowledgement they feel like they deserve. Because their, their mindset and their heart were in the wrong place. That's why a lot of people leave ministry or leave churches. And they like to blame the church. But all in, in, in all reality... It's because of where their heart was at. Their heart was in the wrong place. My friend, our pastors have been hurt, been backstabbed, been talked about. But they've been here for almost 30 years. You and I, I'm pretty sure you and I have had some situations where you've been talked about, you felt that like you were backstabbed, whatever it may have been. But you're still here. I believe that those that are here today, we understand that. But I want, what I want to relate to you is not to lose it. You and I understand, amen, that everything that we do is unto the Lord. Because I can look around this room and I can, I can, you know, go back in conversations I've had or see different testimonies and things like the situations that all of you have, have been through. And I, and I understand where you're at, that you're still here. Because you're genuine. Keep that genuineness, church. The second thing that we could do to squander our call is to have a is a lack of persistence. It could be so easy to give up because the situations and storms that you and I can face, we don't allow God to take us through the process that we're in. Those little storms and those struggles. Yes, there's going to be times of those storms and those struggles, struggles where you want to give up. When those rebukes or those corrections, come on somebody. You may not like it, you may not agree with it. But at the end of the day, when you're a persistent man or woman of God, when you're a man or a woman of God that is persistent, persistent in your walk with Jesus, there's nothing that can stand in your way of you moving forward. See, like I mentioned earlier, you and I have to stay vulnerable before the Lord. You and I have to stay open before the Lord. I, you know, I, I learned, when, as a, and I think I've shared this before, as a young kid growing up, one of my favorite passages of scriptures was I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It, the reason it's my favorite passage of scripture is because it was embedded within me. As a young kid growing up in church, I, I constantly heard that. I constantly heard and I, and I began to believe it. That man, even when there were times I felt like I couldn't do things, I was reminded man, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So what happened, that helped me to be persistent. That helped me to get through high school, come on now. That helped me to get through some tough times in my life. And it's the same way for you and I. The same way for you and I, you and I have to remember the promises of God. You and I have to remember that God gives the toughest battles to the toughest soldiers. Come on, somebody. The toughest battles, the situations you've been going through, my friend, is because God knows you can handle it. Because God knows you can go through it. God knows. He already knows, man, those tough situations. Say, so, yeah, but that sister, she's a prayer warrior. 
Yeah, that brother right there, man, he's a soul winner. And man, even when they don't feel like doing it, they're going to get on their knees. They're going to seek the face of God. Even when they don't feel like going and evangelizing, man, they're going to go out and reach people. And they're going to reach people and they're going to talk about Jesus Christ. Be a persistent people, church. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. It says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. See, there's something that's producing inside of you when you're persistent. There's something that stirs up inside of your heart, inside of your spirit, when you don't give up and when you don't give in to that temptation. There's something that stirs up inside of your heart, inside of your spirit, that allows you to be persistent. It's producing inside of you. I don't know anyone's situation here, but maybe you, you're going through rainbow and sunshine. Everything's great right now. You got a good job. You got some finances. You got a car, whatever it is. You still got to be persistent. You still got to be persistent in the call of God. You still got to be persistent in your prayer life. You still got to be persistent in reading your word. You still got to be persistent in taking that time to separate yourself from the from, from, uh, um, fasting and separate yourself from the things of your flesh. You still got to be persistent. And maybe some that are going through some storms right now. And the waves have been hitting you pretty hard. Maybe your health. Maybe mentally, emotionally. You got to be persistent. You got to go after God. You got to go after the promises that God has given you. God wants to produce this church. He wants to produce something inside of our hearts. You know, one of the things that we're, we've been talking about with, with some of the ministers from our pastors and having, we've been having meetings, there's such a heavy emphasis right now on discipleship within our church. And all discipleship is is taking someone under your wing and, and teaching them and, and, and showing them the things that you have learned. See, God wants to produce you so he can reproduce you. God wants to reproduce who you are. And what you, what, what you are here within our church. Imagine if there was more uh, Brother Jimmy's. Imagine if there was more Miguel's. Imagine if there was more Sister Rose's. Imagine if there was Sister uh, whoever so and so. Imagine if there was more of you. Maybe not like you. Come on now. One Michael's good enough. Come on somebody. One, one Carlos is good enough. Amen. Trust me. No, I'm kidding. Amen. We understand that whatever it is, amen, the, the things that you and I, man, when we begin to reproduce into someone else, when you begin to invest within someone else, that's called discipleship. And this is what God wants to do within our church right now. God wants to raise up more people within our church so that you and I are not stuck in one spot, but, man, you can be relieved of those things and you can move on to somewhere else and do other things but what it's also doing is it's also taking our pastor's hand and say you know what don't worry about it pastor we got more people now man this 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 woman this guy this gang girl this gang man they got it they're ready they can do it but it's going to take for you and I to be persistent in that you and I have to have the eye man when people are new people are coming in do you know that they're a new person? Right? Do we automatically have that eye to see, man, that's a new soul that just came into our church? What do I got to do to get to know that person? What do I got to do to, 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 to get that person's information and talk to them? See, discipleship is what's going to allow us to be an effective church. I was thinking about that earlier on, and I began to think, man, that my battle today will help someone tomorrow. That my battle today is going to help someone tomorrow. That the things I've been through today, the things I went through yesterday can help someone tomorrow and the day after that. But I got to be persistent. Not only persistent in my walk with the Lord, but persistent in my discipleship and in leading others into the Lord. How do you and I remain persistent? We grow through it. You don't, just don't go through it, but you grow through it. 
You examine every situation. You see yourself growing through those things. You see yourself going through. You say, no, I can get through this. Why? Because my pastors and my leaders have gone through it. I can do it. Let's be a persistent church. The third thing is a lack of faith. You see, sometimes we don't believe things because we don't see it. You know, right now you heard as we were praying in the beginning of the church service, you heard as, as my dad was talking about praying for a new building. That's going to take great faith, church. That's going to take big faith. It's going to take all of us together as a church to believe it. Even when we, we, we maybe can't see it with the physical eye. Maybe we may not understand how we're going to get or how we're going to go about it. How we're going to get the finances to build it. But that's where your faith comes in. That's where your faith begins to come in and say, man, I know my God is faithful. I know my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I, we ask. We have so many great examples of men and women who have walked by faith and not by sight. You can look to the word of God. So many men and women in Hebrews chapter 11 and so many more who were told the promise. But they, didn't even, they never even seen it fulfilled. They were told about the promise of the coming Savior in Jesus Christ. And some never even saw it. But yet they remained faithful. And it's the same way for you and I. And I believe we're going to see the promises of God come to pass within our church. Our church is called to be a mega church. Our church is called to impact the city of Chicago. We're not called to be a community church. Come on, somebody. But we're called to be a church that's going to make a, a, an impact here within the entire city. You know, California has around like a, almost 100 churches just in their, 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 their state alone. I mean, Los Angeles has so many churches and victory outreaches. Chicago could be the same way. We have six churches in the city of Chicago right here in Victory Outreach. We can easily have 16 to 20. We can easily have that amount of church, maybe more. You see, but those kind of things, those, that takes great faith. You see, and because of a lack of, uh, it could be a lack of genuineness or a lack of persistence, it only makes it hard to see through the eyes of faith. When you don't have a heart of genuineness, when you don't have, amen, a heart of persistence, it makes things hard to see things by faith. This is why it's important, church, man, when you read the word of God, when you study the scriptures, ask the Lord to reveal to you, to show you, to teach you. When you're going through your circumstances, don't just moan and complain about it. But God, lead me through it. God, show me what can I learn from this. In order for our church to grow, we need big faith. Because without that faith, my friend, we limit ourselves. We need faith in order to reach this city. Or without it, we'll be a faithless church. And I don't know about you, but God has not called us to be a faithless church. God has called us to be a church, amen, that's going to reach the inner cities of Chicago, the inner cities of the world. You and I have to understand that. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, but without faith it is it impossible to please him. Be persistent in your faith. Also be persistent in your giving. Be persistent in your giving. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful, amen, in what God has given you financially. Man, when, when you and I, if, if, if we hinder, amen, our, even when it comes to our finances, it can hinder growth. Some people don't like talking about money. They tune off the preacher or the messenger sometimes when, when they begin to talk about money within the church. But my friend, finances are needed. Finances are key to the growth of church. This is your church, right? Come on, this is your church. So you got to be a, a faithful giver. Give your best, amen.
Number four, a way that we can squander the call of God is a lack of prayer. You see, you and I, church, if we don't have prayer in our lives, a personal life, a personal walk with the Lord. And I'm not just talking about, you know, skipping days here and there. I'll pray Monday and I'll pray Wednesday or Saturday. I'll pray, I'll, I'll tune in on the Zoom, you know, just to see, just them to see my face or I'll, I'll, tune, I'll, I'll tune in whenever we have prayer, things like that. But man, when you're consistently praying, when you're genuine in your prayer life, when you're genuine, amen, in your relationship with the Lord, because that's where it's at. In your prayer life is where your relationship with the Lord is built. That's where it, that's where it happens. It, it's so simple, and it's it, 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 it sometimes it, 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 like it's mind blowing to me when people don't understand this sometimes because it's so simple when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. It's almost the same way as my relationship with my wife. If I don't talk to my wife, what kind of relationship do I have? Let's even let's put it before, even while we were dating. If I never talked to her, what kind of relationship would I have with her? It's so simple, Trip, but sometimes we miss it. It's that simple. You and I simply talking to the Lord, simply communing with the Lord on a daily basis. That's where God begins to create that sense of genuineness, that sense of persistence, where God begins to build your faith. See, our church right now, we're in a time of prayer. Victor Arch International, we're in a time of prayer. We have our time slot at 7 in the morning. So what does that mean? That we need everyone. We need everyone to get together, amen, and pray. We need everyone to get together, get up. Man, if that means you got to get up at 5 in the morning because you start work at 7, do it. Come on, somebody. If that means, man, you know what, maybe you work nights like I do. So you know what that means? I have to stay up a little bit extra and seek the face of God. Whatever you have to do, all of us, church, we got to be on the same page. We have to be in the same mindset. Because without prayer, you and I will not make it. We want the blessings, my friend. You got to pray. You want the miracles. You got to pray. You want your son or your daughter to get saved, you got to pray. You want situations to turn for the better financially, you got to pray. You have to pray, church. We want revival to take place within the city, we have to pray. You don't want to struggle with that secret sin anymore, you have to pray. You have to pray. We want to see a revival and a movement take place every single Sunday, every time we come together, whether it be on a Friday night or a Sunday, even on the streets, we pray. We pray before we do anything. If this was our building, we'd have an hour, an hour of prayer before service started. Right? Especially those you guys know already, man, the Victory Hours, we know how to pray. We know how to get on our knees and seek the face of God. You see, you and I, church, if we want to operate in the supernatural, you and I have to take our prayer life to a new level. Because, my friend, if our prayer life is not where it should be, if it's not where it should be at, if we're just praying just to get by, if we're just praying with no genuineness within our hearts to say, God, I want more of you. God, I need more of you in my life. We're going to squander what God has given us and even what God wants to give us. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 to 7, it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. The gift that God has given you is only cultivated in prayer. The gift that God has given you and I is cultivated in prayer. More gifts begin to get stirred up inside of your heart. More ministries begin to get birthed inside of your heart when you're in prayer. Church, you and I have to understand this. And we have to continue to take this and run with it. 
Because I don't know about you, but we're already looking at next year and, and going into a new location, a new building. So what does that mean? It's going to take great faith. It's going to take a whole lot more prayer. It's going to take finances. It's going to take persistence. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take more commitment. You see, we're in a time right now within our world and our society. I don't know if, obviously, we're Christians here, but I don't know if you heard what the Pope said, right, about marriage within the church. You see where, you see where the world is going right now. You see how society is, is, is changing. People don't want to be committed no more. Some people don't want to be loyal anymore. But I believe here within Victor Irish Chicagoland, God is raising up more men and women who are prayer warriors, men and women who are intercessors, men and women who are givers, men and women who know how to reach souls, men and women who want to disciple, men and women who want to go to the different cities, men and women who want to pioneer, men and women who want to build this church. You're here today. And the last thing, and one of the most important things, that how we can squander our call, the greatest one that can hinder our call is sin. You see, sin is the thing that separates you and I from God. Sin is the one element that can keep you from your connection and your relationship with the Lord. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 to 34, we hear about the story of Esau and Jacob. And you see, what, what, what happened in this story is that, is that Esau sold his birthright. And, and a birthright was something that was given to the oldest son from generation to generation. It was handed down to him. But you see what Esau did, he gave it up for a momentary substance. He gave it up in just a moment, in just an instance, he sold his birthright. And see, church, every moment that you and I, every time that, that a sin comes into the picture, you and I, maybe we fall into sin. Maybe even willingly when you fall into sin, you're selling that birthright. You're giving it up. That's why the Bible says that it's that sin that separates us from God. Every moment, my friend, that you and I, Lose that connection with the Lord, it can be a little bit harder to get it back. Because it's so easily to squander what God is, just like Esau, he had a whole inheritance. He had a whole inheritance that was passed down from generation to generation to him. And he gave it up. I believe the Bible says for a morsel of soup, I believe. Something to eat, he gave it up for it. Jacob knew about Esau's inheritance. Just like the enemy knows the inheritance that God has given you. Just like the inheritance that God has given our ministry. The enemy could probably be whispering in some ears saying, give it up. What's the point of serving God any longer? What's the point of being involved in ministry any longer? My friend, that's a lie from the enemy. That's a lie from the pit of hell, my friend. What God has given you and I, the great call that God has given you and I, whatever it is that you're called to do, whatever it is that you feel purpose to do, you take it and you run with it and you hold on to it and you keep it. You take care of it. You mold and you shape and you get better in it. Don't get stagnant in what God has given you. Don't get comfortable in what God has given you. Because the moment you get comfortable, you get vulnerable. And the moment you get vulnerable, the enemy, all the enemy needs is a foothold to get inside of your life and to destroy things inside of your life. He wants to take away the inheritance. He wants to take away the promises. He wants to take away the call that God has placed upon your life. 
You see, but when we have a church, come on, somebody that is prayed up, when we have a church that knows how to worship the Lord, when you have a church that knows how to give, when we have a church that knows how to be on the streets, when we have a church that knows how to be persistent in the things of God, we're not going to sell our inheritance for a moment of sin, for a moment of pleasure. You see, church, I say all this to say that we need you. I'm speaking on behalf of my pastor's heart that we need you, church. We can't keep operating the way we've been operating. We have to do more. We need more men and women to rise up. We need more men, men and women, man, to take their place within our church. We need more ushers. We need more singers. We need more men in the sound. Man, we need more people to get involved in what God is doing within our church. This is serious business. God is on the move right now, church. And we need you. Look at somebody and tell them, we need you. As the musicians come and the singers. You see, if you want to value the call, be genuine. Be sincere before the Lord. If you want to value the call, be genuine unto others. Be sincere unto others. If you want to be genuine, if you want to value the call, be genuine with yourself. Be genuine with yourself. Be sincere with yourself. And say, where am I at today that I can, that I, that I can be better in? What is it that I can do to be better what is it that I can do to help lift my pastor's arms? What is it that I can do within our ministry? What is it that I can do for my family? You see, many hear the call, but few choose it. Many of us hear the call of God, but only few of you choose to live for it, to go after it. You see, I believe, church, that the calling of God that he's given all of us, it's always to give him honor. It's always to give him praise and glory. The calling of God, that's all it is. It's just to give him honor where it's due. You see, but the moment that we forget that is the moment where it gets dangerous. The moment we forget why we're doing what we're doing. The moment that you and I forget, and I'm talking to the future you. Come on, somebody. In a few months when you're going through some trials, when that storm hits, because it's, it's, it's going to come. Be reminded. Be reminded I got to be persistent. And I got to be persistent for my family. I got to be persistent for my church. I got to be persistent for the soul that's not even sitting here yet. Man, I want my faith to increase. I want to be found faithful. I don't want there to be any lack. I don't want to be a hindrance to my church. I don't want to be a hindrance to the presence of God. Man, but I want to be someone that compliments my church. That compliments the ministries I'm involved in. You see, God calls us to three things really quick. God calls us to his son, Jesus Christ. No one can come to the father except through the son. The second thing God calls us to is consecration. 
to be set apart from the world, to be found holy. Despite of our mistakes, despite of our mishaps, where we're constantly going before the Lord in brokenness. And the last call is that we serve Him in everything that we do. I'm not just talking about ministry. I'm not talking about signing up and being an usher. And I'm not talking about just that. But in everything that you and I do to serve Him. In everything. As we all stand here this afternoon. You've heard it said from our pastors that revival is here. My friend, I don't know about you, but I want to compliment that revival. I want to be an asset to the revival. I want to be a soldier in the army of God. I want to be an armor bearer that can help my pastor reach, amen, whatever situations, whatever uh, circumstances that come, I want to be able to be there to help. And I was reading this week in my like daily devotionals, and I, I, I came upon a, a, a chapter in Psalms chapter 85, and I'm going to read it really quick. Just give me a few moments. Psalm chapter 85, and I, I really feel like it's real key right now for our church. It says, Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. Restore us, O God, of our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and shall make his footsteps our pathway. I was reading that passage of scripture and throughout the week just constantly reading it and reading it. God's going to bring the increase. God's going to bring it. But my friend, he needs laborers. He needs men and women. He needs w women that are, that, are, that are clothed with strength and dignity. He needs mighty men of valor. He needs gang warriors and gang girls. To make an impact. God wants to use you and I. The calling that God has given you and I. Imagine if all of us were in the same mind, in the same heart. Imagine the damage that we can do to the kingdom of the enemy. They're going to sing a song right now. And I want you just to lift your hands. And I want you to listen to the words. I want you to close your eyes and no looking around. And as they begin to sing... Let him minister to you this afternoon. Hallelujah, Jesus.